Welcome to another edition of Don't Waste Your Time. This video may not be for you. My name is Purcell. This is the updated version of uh, the MCU 1 into the conversion of MCU 2. Now, it was a struggle to get this MCU 2, and we will talk about that in just a second. But for first thoughts and first time messing with it, I'm glad that I got it. So let's get into it, shall we? Our older cars from 2012 to 2015, we don't like new technology. At least my car doesn't like technology. I went to Baltimore one time to get the change from the 3G to LTE. My car failed twice. And uploading the software, it literally failed twice because it just didn't like having the new LTE. That was over three years ago. a brand new service center which is in Sterling so I made the appointment on the 1st of October 2020 uh, got confirmation that my MCU was in and so off I drove the appointment was at 7 o'clock in the morning I had to leave here at 5 45 in the morning I got there at 6 45 told the guy that I was here and he said okay you have your uber credits I'm like I live like an hour away. I don't think Tesla's gonna pay Uber credits for me. So he was nice enough to give me a loan of car. So I drove the Model 3 back to my house. About noon that day on October 1st, I got a message on my phone saying that my car was uh, in service and things were going smoothly. And about an hour or so later, they said they were wrapping up. I'm like, man, okay, that was pretty fast. I jumped in the car and drove back to Sterling. I got to Sterling about 3.30 that day, and I stood outside again just waiting for someone. I didn't see my car, although I was checking my phone, and I saw my car at the front open. I'm like, okay, that's a little odd, but okay, fine. So I walked around, and I saw my car was still in the bay. So I walked back around to the front door, and I got someone's attention. The guy who met me that, uh, that morning he came outside, and he said, hey, your car failed. We're going to have to try to update the software tomorrow because we close at 4 o'clock. And when I looked at my phone, it was 10 after 4. So I drove all the way back to Southern Maryland. October 2nd. Checked the phone, saw that the car was in service, so I decided not to uh, anticipate. So I just waited until I got a message, roughly about 12 o'clock, saying that my car is ready. So I went back down to Sterling, and I picked up my car, and all is well. Now, here's the caveat. One, they gave me a credit because I was misquoted a price, which I never got a quote for the original price, although I knew what it was. But... Uh, it was a uh, an error on Tesla's part because they thought I had a new MCU. They said, I'm Paul, I apologize, we give you $100 off. And then I think just the inconvenience of me driving <laughs> up there uh, while they told me that the car was ready, and in essence it wasn't, or it failed. So they gave me some more money off. So uh, all in all, I think I saved about $350 off of the cost. So I think that's a win-win <laughs> for me. I'm actually kind of happy with this. And I'd like to thank Casey Green because uh, Casey told me to take photos, which I told you in the previous uh, videos. He told me to take photos of all of my settings. Nothing was, everything was just fine. So the one thing I'd like to tell you that if you do get a new MCU 2 when you get home, one, that your home link will probably not work. So I had to reset the home link because I have a garage here. And when I got up to my house, the garage door didn't open. So uh, yeah, I had to go and get the remote controlled and we got that fixed. I was so tired of being on the road those two days. I forgot to sync my phone with the car. So that was a small issue, but that wasn't really major issue at all. And oh, by the way, when you do get home, you have to reset your car to make sure you have your um, Wi-Fi password in there. In this 
version of MCU 2 is that everything is so much faster. Remember, I had a complaint about the owner's manual. So when you touch the owner's manual, I would just have this black screen. And although I would tap like owner's manual, it would just give me that and then nothing over here. Although I'll be physically tapping, like charging, 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 and nothing would happen over here. So now if I just tap charging and then I tap to something specifically like uh, battery information, bam, it comes up. The other screen didn't do that. It took forever. I had to do a reset. I had to push the buttons in to make that happen. So I do like the fact that the CPU is way much faster than what I had for MCU 1. You know, the internet was basically non-existent. And so now, bam, you know, it comes up automatically when you just touch the internet. You can scroll and you can find out information, although I, I use my phone, but it's just nice to have. I do like the karaoke functions, although I'm not doing any karaoke type stuff, but I do like the fact that, you know, you can have the variety of watching your entertainment. I'm uh, a big Netflix fan, and then you have the games. I do have a PlayStation 4, maybe getting a PlayStation 5. Matter of fact, by the time this video will be seen, I probably will have a PlayStation 5. So I do like going in here and uh, just checking out Netflix. I completely redid my audio. So just to listen to Netflix with my great super DSP sound in my car, it makes it sound like I'm at a movie theater. So that is really, really awesome. Overall, I think it was really nice for me to upgrade. I did not take the previous Tesla's rep advice by saying, if you want the new upgrade, buy a new Tesla. Uh, no, that didn't happen. So for my 2015 Model S 70D, if you have a little bit of coin in your pocket and if you are into the techie stuff and if you want a faster response on your screen, faster internet, reading the owner manual, maybe having some entertainment while you're charging your car or something like that, go for it. If you have no problems with your screen at all, is not having the yellowing effect around, if your screen is not freezing up or anything, eh, I would wait. But for me, my screen was freezing up quite a bit, uh, too much for me uh, uh, to actually voice concerns about it other than just do the reset and also reading the owner's manual. I like to read the owner's, owner's manual from time to time, waiting for the owner's manual to boot up. I didn't like that. Another thing too, when I got in my car, this screen would be on, but this screen wouldn't be on. It had to kind of wait and sync together before I can actually drive off somewhere. So it was a few things that was kind of great net me, great net me, but overall, I'm very happy that I did do the upgrade to MCU too. It is totally up to you. I'm glad I did it. That's all I have to say, and I'm going in because it's been a long day. Thank you for watching another edition of Don't Waste Your Time. I hope this video is for everybody. Peace.